Welcome back to Weekly Briefing. We are here with our panel of experts and joining me in studio, Terry Schilling, President of American Principles Project, Jim Robbins, columnist for USA Today, Chris Farrell, Director of Investigations at Judicial Watch and author of Exiled Emissary, George Earl III, and Donna Jackson, Accountant and Director of Development at Project 21. This week, a teenage boy was found guilty on all charges of sexually assaulting a ninth grade girl in a bathroom. He was allowed in the bathroom because he was dressed as a girl, protected by the school's transgender policies. Here's what Barack Obama had to say. We don't have time to be wasting on these phony, trumped up culture wars. This fake outrage that the right-wing media is peddles to juice their ratings. And the fact that he's willing to go along with it instead of talking about serious problems that actually affect serious people, that's a shame. That's not what this election's about. That's not what you need, Virginia. Instead of forcing our communities to cut back at a time when we're just starting to recover, we should be doing more to support people who are educating our kids and keeping our neighborhoods safe. Terry, rape of a teenage girl doesn't affect real people. Yeah, it's interesting. It's uh, calling the rape and sexual assault of not just one teenage girl, but two underage teenage girls a phony trumped up culture war is a very interesting way to describe that. President Obama is absolutely shameless. He is the king of the culture wars. This is a president who, while he was in office, decided it was a top priority to sue Catholic nuns who provide hospice care to poor and lonely people while they're dying. He decided to do the transgender bathroom mandates. He decided to put girl, or boys into girls' sports. He wants peop, the American people to pay for taxpayer funding of abortion. So to have President Obama talk about trumped up phony culture wars is just a little bit too cute. He's a very bad man. He's a, he's a dishonest man. And we're really lucky that he's no longer in the White House because he did so much damage to this country. But the good thing is, is that parents across the country aren't taking the bait. Right. They see these sexual assaults. They, as a result of President Obama and woke left-wing uh, Democrats' public policy positions. Donna, what do you make of uh, Barack Obama's position on raping teenage girls? Well, you know, Barack Obama has always had this way of talking down to the people. He always wants to dehumanize individuals. Let me tell you, parents used to trust the schools. They used to think that I can send my child to school and my child is safe from sexual predators. My child is safe from any uh, ad adversaries on the, in the neighborhood that might harm them. Now the predators are in the schools. They're teaching in the class. They're dehumanizing their children. They're demoralizing their children. Parents absolutely have a right to be involved in their kids' education, and they should fight back because this is not a puppy. This is a life that's going to be affected the rest of their lives. Right. And the school is okay with destroying that life to make money and to have power, and that's not right. Very scary. On the topic of parents speaking up at school board meetings, Attorney General Merrick Garland defended a memo in which he described frustrated parents as domestic terrorists. This is a memo to the Federal Bureau of Investigations saying, go investigate parents as domestic terrorists. That is not what the memo says at all. It does it, not is it what the letter says? That is not what Is it what the letter says? I don't care what the letter says. You don't I care. Can't. You said it was the basis of your memo. You testified under oath before the House of Representatives. The letter was the basis of your memo. Now you don't care about the letter? Jim, this is scary stuff. Very scary. I think that uh, they tried to slip this through and they got caught. That was the problem. Uh, we now know that the White House was behind forming this letter, that they worked with the School Board Association in a way to shoot it to the Justice Department fully knowing what the Justice Department was going to do with it. And, I mean, they came out with the letter uh, almost instantly, so this was all prearranged. What do they get out of this? What, what benefit does it give to control or you know, authoritarian principles by, by having the FBI investigate parents? 
Well, I don't think they get anything out of it. But the scary part of that is if you look at how this task force has been formed with the FBI, it's not just the, the law enforcement side, which, you know, this is really a, a local law enforcement issue. It shouldn't be federal. But they also have the National Security Division involved in this. And when you have them involved, it unleashes this whole panoply of Patriot Act tools that they can use to surveil, to spy, and do whatever they need to do, work with the NSA. But essentially, it's, it's domestic spying. Right. And why is the National Security Division involved in this? It just shows how comprehensive they want this to be to clamp down on parents. Chris, what do you think about the FBI taking this type of action? It's another effort to criminalize your political opposition. We saw this with Barack Obama uh, turning the IRS on the Tea Party movement years ago. And now they know that this crazy woke agenda, whether it's CRT or this uh, transsexual thing, they know that it activates and motivates a lot of sort of bedroom community suburbia type parents who find this uh, a crazy agenda. They don't subscribe to it. They don't want their kids exposed to it. So it's a motivating element for them. When they bring in the federal law enforcement approach to this and the National Security Division that Jim mentioned, this is an effort to suppress turnout, to suppress activism. It, they're trying to frighten and marginalize and even criminalize their political opposition. It's Terrifying. Do you think that they've gone too far and so now they have to, con they've basically been outed and now they're stuck and have to continue to pretend like it's okay? Yeah, I don't anticipate any rollback. Yeah. They, they, it, when in doubt, they double down. They get worse, they don't get better. Yeah, I think that's right. Terrifying. There's a massive caravan of illegal aliens approaching our southern border and Joe Biden isn't doing anything about it. Will we be overrun again? What do you think, Chris? You get what you subsidize. You know, the Obama, excuse me, the Biden administration, the Obama third term, uh, is doing everything they possibly can to destroy what little is left of our southern border. Right. Uh, I've actually marched with caravanners in Guatemala, so I know of what I speak. I'm not reporting on this from a distance. I've walked along the roads with Hondurans, Guatemalans, and El Salvadorans, interviewed them, interviewed officials. I know that the, the, the system that's been established to help move them along, water points, food points, first aid, it's very organized. It's, uh, it's a de decided, concerted effort to move an enormous population right. northbound and overwhelmingly military age males, 15 to 50. You're going to see crying women and children, and there are crying women and children, but that's like 2% of the overall number of folks. And that's actually the next point I was going to ra raise. Jim. It appears that these, maybe it's just because media finally is being forced to address it, but it appears these caravans are actually getting more and more dangerous to Americans. Oh, I would say so. And they're giving them more encouragement, as Chris said. Under the Trump administration, you had either these were deterred and kept in place, or they were kept in Mexico because we had to deal with the Mexicans. Now all that's off. So you have the worst elements of whatever country want to come north, want to come into this country, as Chris mentioned, mainly young men, and there's nothing to stop them. First, the Biden administration said there's no crisis. Then they said, oh, it's seasonal. Then they said, oh, Kamala Harris will take care of it. You know, now, Joe hasn't been to the border since whenever it was, 2008. They're not doing anything to stop this, and this is a symptom of it because, as, as, as Chris said, you get what you pay for, you get what you encourage. If they don't stop it now, it's just going to get worse. Terry, I'm almost out of time, but does this border crisis affect American families? A hundred percent. I mean, it's hard to pinpoint exactly one area that it affects the American family. It affects everything. It affects our wages. It affects our, our ability to be safe in our communities. It affects our elections, right? This is, it affects our culture. It changes our culture. Uh, it, 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 you can't draw a straight line. This affects right. the entire country.